Greetings, YouTube friends. It's Joyce from Morris Patch of Heaven Homestead. Today I am in the trailer and I wanted to share some things with you. Um, last week, or yeah, about two weeks ago, I was able to share um, with the ladies from the ho a homesteading group um, the benefits of herbal teas. I was asked um, to come and share some different ways to make yummy drinks that are healthy for us during the summer. It is so hot here in Missouri. I don't know how hot it is where you're at, but boy, it's in the hundreds and we need to stay hydrated and sugar-laden drinks are not the way to go. We don't drink soda or juice. We pretty much drink herbal teas and water. That is pretty much all that we drink um, so I wanted to share with these ladies and I want to share with you how you can make herbal teas um, taste delicious and reap the benefits. Um, I know that here in the Midwest, uh, sweet tea is a staple for everyone. Everyone loves to go to Walmart, get a big old jug of sweet tea, take it to every outing. Um, it's delicious, but it is so full of sugar and it's not good for you at all. Um, and it's made with black tea, which is really not a favorite of mine. I prefer green tea um, over black tea. I think black tea is just a little too strong for my taste, but there are benefits with the black tea as well as the green. But I wanted to share with you ways that you can make some delicious herbal teas for your family, keep them in the refrigerator, and be able to drink on them all day long and stay hydrated. Um, so first of all, I'm gonna share with you um, some of the ones that I shared at the class that I taught. And then I'm gonna show you how to make some because it is so, so simple. And um, these herbs are readily available. A lot of them just grow on the homestead. You can harvest them yourself. I'm gonna show you a couple. I'm gonna show you uh, the mint that's growing on the homestead and cleavers and then tell you exactly what they are good for. So I'm gonna start with one of my favorites, which is lemon balm. Lemon balm grows prolific. I mean, it just spreads like crazy. And it is so amazingly good for you. We buy our teas in bulk because it just saves so much. Instead of going and buying teas in these little tea bags, you know what, we pay for these little tea bags because this is an organic um, tea. You really do not wanna buy anything in a tea bag form if it is not organic because they process it and do all this stuff to it and you just don't want that because then you're not really getting the full herb. But we buy in these Mylar bags from, you know, this one is from Frontier. There's different companies that you can go through and for a bag like this of lemon balm, this may have cost, you know, $15, $20. And there is so much in here. This will last us at least a year, if not longer. And you can freeze them, you can refrigerate them, you can just keep them in this Mylar bag, you know, clipped shut like this, and it will be good for a very long time. Just make sure you keep it cool. But anyway, lemon balm is one of these things that you can grow so easily. We had it at our other homestead and it just was in our planters and it just every year got bigger and bigger and bigger and it just will do that. It will spread like crazy. So if you have it growing, share it with a friend because then they can start lemon balm as well. Lemon balm is one of these things that if, well, I shouldn't say if, we all live in this world and there's a lot of stress and anxiety. This is one of those teas that will calm you down, help you sleep better, um, it promotes you know sleep and it also improves your appetite if you are having issues during the summer not eating well it will improve your appetite it eases pain and discomfort from indigestion so if you're having any kind of indigestion this is good to eat after you've eaten I never suggest anybody eat during a meal you either eat a half an hour before or an hour after I never ever drink anything with our, my meal because it upsets your digestive juices and just doesn't, um, it pushes things through too quickly. Okay, so it also helps cognitive function. Yes, 
Um, it helps with menstrual cramps, cold sores. You can make a salve out of this or a tincture and put it on those cold sores. Um, it might, um, helps with viruses, guys, different viruses. And like I was saying, gas, bloating, and colic, yes. So if you're having issues with any of that, think about drinking and making lemon balm, guys. It is so easy to grow, but if you are not able to grow it, you can purchase it. Um, I will have a link below where you can get these. And again, like I was saying, herbs in tea form are very inexpensive. Okay, so I'm going to go on to the next one that is another favorite that is one that we in our home never go without, and that is stinging nettles. I know you're probably going, oh my goodness, stinging nettles. Look at this bag, guys. This huge bag was $20, okay? It is so huge. Um, we will be drinking on that for a very long time, but when I make it, I make it in the gallon, and we just drink it, and stinging nettle can be put in soup, and it is delicious. The smell when you open this bag is so amazing that you can stick it in dips, you can, like I said, put it in soups, you can put it in whatever. It tastes delicious. It doesn't have to only be a tea, it can also be eaten. So, win-win. So anyway, stinging nettles helps reduce inflammation, which a lot of us deal with it. You know, in the, this day and age, we just do, it's from the foods we eat. Um, it treats enlarged prostrate um, and its symptoms. Hay fever, it lowers your blood pressure, guys. Yep. It um, aids in your blood sugar control, so it can control blood sugar. Uh, urinary tract infections, joint issues, osteoarthritis, hair growth, yes. Um, insects, bites, hemorrhoids, kidney stones. This is just the tip of the iceberg. I could go on and on and on, but I just don't want to overwhelm you. So I'm just going to give you a few of the benefits of each so that I am not just, you know, overwhelming you completely. And if you have any questions about any of these, leave it in the description or the comments below and I will answer them for you. And let me know some of the herbs that you make into tea and what they might be good for. I am a <laughs> herb fanatic. I love all things herbs. The Lord made an herb for absolutely everything, and I think all we need to do is find it, utilize it, take it in. Remember, with herbs, it could take up to three months. It's not a quick fix, but you have to remember, how long did it take you to get that ailment? It wasn't overnight. It could have been years. So three months is really not that bad. Okay, so another one of my all-time favorites, I have a lot of favorites, as you can tell, and that's why these are the ones I'm gonna share with you, and these are the same ones I shared with the ladies at the little homesteading um, meetup. Okay, um, I don't have it here, but peppermint. Peppermint is one of my all-time favorites. During the winter, that is all I drink. I don't know why my body craves it, so I drink it. I drink, the kiddos know, first thing in the morning, Avonlea makes me my peppermint, and before I go to bed, I have a cup of peppermint tea and throughout the day. And so during the summer, I want to incorporate it and make it into an iced peppermint tea. And it is so delicious. And that's good for uh, digestive upsets, you know, so, um, and also for tension headaches. It's good for migraines. It freshens your breath. I think for me, it's just an uplifting. It uplifts my spirit. It, the smell of peppermint is so aromatic. It's so amazing. It's good for sinuses, cramps, bacterial infections. It improves your sleep. So therefore, have a cup of peppermint tea before bed. It could be cold in the summer and hot in the winter. Um, it's full of antioxidants. Yes, um, allergy symptoms and suppresses your hunger. And also, it is good for mental clarity. So yeah, drink your peppermint tea. Okay. I could talk about these things forever, but I don't want to bore you. So hopefully stick with me till the end, um, just so that you can hear about two more herbs I'm gonna tell you about. This one here is simply amazing. How many of you clean house in the spring, do spring cleaning? Okay, do we spring clean our body, our house, um, our temple here? This is something that we should be cleaning as well. 
And one of the best things is cleavers. If you've never heard of cleavers, um, it is simply an amazing herb. It is something that grows in most gardens as a weed, people would call it a weed, but guys, cleavers cleans the lymphatic system. It gets things moving because when we have a stagnant lymphatic system, we have issues. The lymphatic system is what cleans everything out. So when we are cleaning house in the spring, clean your house as well. It, um, so it enhances the function of the lymphatic system. It tastes delicious. It is so yummy. Make it into an iced tea and just sip on it all day. That's what I do. I get a big old mason jar. I add ice, some stevia, big old straw in there, and I am a happy camper. I go everywhere with my mason jar of tea. And if it be um, cleavers that day or peppermint, whatever it is, bring it with you and drink. Just drink. It will help you not be um, dehydrated and it will help with everything. I mean, so the lymphatic system is the one thing I wanted to talk about. It prevents wrinkles. It helps with spider bites, maintains your weight, um, reduces swelling and congestion. So cleavers for the lymphatic system for the wind. And then one more that I want to share with you, and that is dandelion root. You know that little beautiful little flower that grows in everyone's garden or yard that people think is a weed? Guys, it is far from a weed. It is so amazing. The flower can be used for, you know, a, a dandelion jelly, um, and then you can use the greens for salad, and then the root is what you want to use for tea. And so dandelion is one of those that's right up there as a superfood. Highly nutritious, guys. Fights inflammation, reduces cholesterol, triglyceride levels, promotes liver health. It helps your liver. If you have fatty liver, whatever, drink dandelion root. Guys, yeah, dandelion root has actually helped people with cancer. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Got a little, ex little excited there. It helps um, kill cancer cells. Yeah, the Lord knew what he was doing when he gave us that beautiful little yellow flower in the yard that shines its little head at us. It is not a weed, it is an herb, and it is highly beneficial. Kidney health detoxifies the gallbladder, sunburns immune system, strengthens your bones, skin health, slows down the sign of aging, just to name a few. So anyway, guys, you can tell that I am so very passionate about herbs, and I wanted to share them with you, um, just to show you that you can make a delicious sweet tea without sugar and you don't have to go to the grocery store and get a big old jug you can make your own so i'm going to turn this around real quick and i'm going to show you kind of how i do this um it's so simple y'all have probably done this before um but anyway let me show you real quick real quick i want to share one more thing with you i am very caffeine sensitive always have been but there is something called dandy blend which is also made with dandelion and it is the most delicious tasting coffee ever. I do an iced coffee every couple of days and I add heavy cream to it, um, organic heavy cream, a little bit of stevia ice, and then a couple spoonfuls of this dandy blend. And guys, it is the most delicious iced coffee ever. And Gene, who drinks coffee, says he cannot tell the difference. It tastes exactly like coffee. So if you are caffeine sensitive, this stuff can be bought at the health food store. It's like $10 a bag, lasts a very long time. It's good for you, and it doesn't give you the jitters. So I want to share that with you real quick. Y'all need to give this a try. Okay, so what I'm going to do right now is show you how to make a sun tea with our lemon balm. This lemon balm, I have to tell you guys, is so amazingly fresh. That's the wonderful thing about Frontier is the herbs that they send you are really, really fresh. It actually smells like peach. <laughs> it's so good. So I am, what I've done here is I have one of these little mesh tea bags that I have filled with lemon balm. You can get these on Amazon. They're really cheap. You can rewash them, reuse them for many, many times. 
And so I'm just throwing that in there because I don't want to heat up um, the camper right now. So I'm just going to put this outside in the sun. I've got one of these little muslin caps that I'm going to put on there. And a couple hours in the sun and boy, we have the most delicious herbal tea. And then I will just put it in the fridge with some stevia and I will drink on this all day. It is so amazing. You can also do it in a mug and just fill your little tea, you know, little, I don't know what they call these, little tea cup um, with tea leaves and you hang it from your tea cup and then you will just pour your hot water right over your herbs and it will infuse your tea within 10 minutes you have a delicious cup of hot herbal tea. Or you can put it in a little tea ball if you prefer that. Again, let it sit for 10 minutes, take it out. Um, I'm one of these that likes to reuse my tea twice just to get the most out of it. So this tea bag here will be run again and I'll mix the two together and therefore I will end up with a lovely um, batch of lemon balm tea. So see guys, it is very simple to make your own sweet tea. It doesn't require much at all. I wanted to just share this with you. You can do it hot, you can do it cold, however you want to do it, but start drinking herbal teas versus the sweet tea in the store, which is not good for you. It's full of sugar. But anyway, guys, I hope that uh, you enjoyed this, that you learned a little bit. Um, if you have any questions or you have some herbal teas you want to share with me, put it in the comments below and I will respond to that. Um, if you like these kind of videos, let me know. We can do more of them. We can do fermenting. Um, we're going to do some canning. All are going to start taking place inside of the trailer. We probably will not be able to do pressure canning in here. That will take place outside because a little scary, but um, give us a thumbs up if you're enjoying our videos. It really does help the channel. Um, if you've not subscribed, please consider doing so and coming along this journey with us. Next, we are going to be working on the electrical in the abandoned house. Then before long, we will be laying um, the driveway for the house that's going to be built up here. Come along with us. We'd love to have you. But we will, I'm going to end for now. We'll catch you on the next one. God bless you. Okay. Do you see this weed here? Well, some call it a weed. We call it an herb, has those little long fingers that kind of stick to your clothes. This is what we call cleavers. And cleavers is an amazing herb. I'm gonna tell you all about it, but I wanted to show you what it looked like here in the garden. Um, it just kind of, you know, pops up every now and then. We let it uh, be so that we can make a tea out of it. Um, but yeah, that's what cleavers looks like. This is what mint looks like. There are a bunch of different varieties. There's chocolate mint, there's spearmint. This is um, peppermint. So yeah, there's a couple different kinds. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to show you what, what mint looks like. It smells amazing.